Hello everyone, today we will explore data modeling and RDF using linked data principles and compare the exercise against a traditional relational database as well as a different type of graph database to RDF known as a property graph database. We're going to be covering practical aspects by showing examples of how a similar data set may be modeled in MySQL, Neo4j and GraphDB one of many good RDF triple stores out there. We will not be covering in too great a detail the theory of graph models, nor theoretical aspects of RDF and the semantic web, but instead start with some background on the difference between a property graph database like Neo4j and RDF triple store. A property graph database represents data exactly as they are modeled with nodes or vertices and relationships or edges. Let's take an example if we wish to say that the famous mathematician Charles Babbage influenced the career of Ada Lovelace, whom we regard as the first ever computer programmer. In a property graph model, it is a straightforward relationship connecting two nodes depicting each individual. The properties or string literals denoting their names are contained within each node, and the relationship between the two is named influenced. In a triple store, we would denote the same by creating three sets of triples, comprising subject, predicate, and object. In our example, we use the linked open data vocabulary provided by the Library of Congress, called the name authority file, to indicate the individuals whom we are referring to. Additionally, we choose to adopt well-known ontologies like PROF and FOF to signify an associative relationship like INFLUENCED and a string literal property like NAME. If we look at the resource for Charles Babbage in the NAME authority file, the following labels are returned. While we understand that these are authoritative labels, typically represented as preferred or alternate or alt labels, it may be that we want to display them differently in the user interface of our application, and therefore select a different predicate for the property. In our example, we choose to use FOF name from the FOF ontology for the string literal Charles Babbage. As you can tell, selecting ontologies and predicates to adopt for linked data applications can sometimes be an art form. Now let us consider an example dataset to model. We have a set of four people, Charles Babbage, Blaise Pascal, Ada Lovelace, and Mary Somerville. We wish to indicate that Pascal influenced Babbage, who in turn influenced Lovelace, who was also influenced by Somerville. We then have a couple of countries indicating their places of birth, Pascal from France, and the rest the UK. We now have a hierarchical vocabulary of subject terms we wish to adopt to indicate what each individual is known for. Pascal, Babbage, Lovelace, and Somerville are all scientists. So let us begin from the parent term, science. Underneath science, we may have math, physical sciences, and computer science. Under physical sciences, we have physics and astronomy which in turn has astrophysics as a child term. Pascal is known for his work in fluid mechanics, and for simplicity we can make the association between Pascal and physics. Babbage is of course a well-known mathematician, Lovelace known for early computer science, and Somerville for the purposes of this example astrophysics. So there you have it the data set we wish to model in our databases. Let us begin the exercise by creating the databases and populating our data set in MySQL, Neo4j, and GraphDB. You can quickly see that our data model in an SQL database requires a table for every relationship that we wish to establish between two entity classes, like people and places. Each class has their own table. In this example, they are person, country, 
and subject term. In the case of Neo4j, populating the dataset appears to be a less structured process. This is because we are describing vertices and edges in the query language cipher exactly as we see them in our diagram. And we can construct our create statements from various different vantage points. When it comes to modeling in linked data, one of the first things to decide is whether to work in a silo and custom develop ontologies, which comprises classes, relationships, and properties, and develop our own vocabulary of terms within each class, or to adopt linked open data principles of using authoritative ontologies and vocabularies. In our example, we will use the associative relationship prof influenced contained in the prof ontology to indicate the same relationship between the individuals. Person, country of birth from the person ontology developed by the European Commission and BBC core known for from the BBC ontology. We may already have pre-cached copies of the vocabularies that we wish to adopt. In our example, we chose to use the name authority file and subject headings vocabularies from the Library of Congress, and we may wish to search for their linked data resource or subject URIs. For this exercise, I will show you how we do that using search and browse features of a linked data application we developed. In our application, we can easily locate linked data URIs with a simple keyword search. Select the name we want from the search results and simply copy the URI for later use. We repeat the steps for Babbage, Lovelace and Somerville. If a vocabulary contains a hierarchy of terms, we have the option to perform a tree browse to get to the term we wish to use. Now let's have a look at the resulting dataset in Sparkle, the linked data query and update language we use to populate our triple store. Notice the namespaces of our adopted ontologies above, followed by the actual update command. In our example, all resource URIs are obtained from their respective vocabularies, people, places, and subjects. Now that we have populated our databases, Let's have a look at a basic query operation on all three databases. Say that we wish to query for people in our database who are known for their work in physical sciences. We expect a result set comprising only Blaise Pascal and Mary Somerville. Right away, we observe that querying of hierarchical data is not what SQL databases are good at. I will not be writing a start procedure or use workarounds with temporary tables and dynamic variables. Instead, let's assume we know that there are only two other levels below physical sciences to query, and then limit our SQL statement using joins and nested select. Here is the resulting query. And as you can see, both Pascal and Somerville are listed in the results. In Neo4j, our query is more intuitive. As you can see, our entire dataset is modeled in the database exactly as we observed in our previous slide. Our cipher query is essentially the pattern we wish to match, which in our example entails identifying subject terms all the way up to the parent node, physical sciences. Similarly, in the linked data context, we structure our Sparkle query to match the same pattern. Like our previous insert statement, querying our triple store involves structuring the select statement with sets of triples we wish to match against. Similar to the Neo4j property graph model, we can traverse hierarchies with a recursive wildcard statement. In this case, we can even walk the property path from person to subject and perform the recursion in just a single line. 
In this video, we have shown how data modeling is done in relational databases, property graphs, and triple stores. The example we chose accentuates the advantages of adopting graph models in general, and linked data in particular. While there are still many applications that relational databases are well suited for, there are as many others that benefit from the reduced complexity and performance gains of graph models. In the case of linked data, there are the added benefits from entailment and inference rules when external data sources are referenced or vocabularies are adopted. I hope you found this introductory video comparing data modeling with SQL, a property graph database, and linked data helpful. Thank you for watching.